I didn't want my brother-in-law at my wedding because he was obsessed with me and tried to kiss me at a family party. He showed up drunk and ruined our reception but my husband's response left everyone speechless. I, 28 female, am getting married to my fiancé Jake, 30 male, in two months. We've been together for five years and engaged for one year. I'm really excited about our wedding, but there's one issue that's causing a lot of stress, Jake's brother, Mark, 32 male. I met Jake at a friend's barbecue five years ago. It was a beautiful summer day, and I remember feeling nervous about going since I didn't know many people there. My friend Sarah insisted I come, saying she wanted to introduce me to someone. That someone turned out to be Jake. We hit it off immediately, bonding over our shared love of obscure indie bands and terrible horror movies. By the end of the night, we'd exchanged numbers and made plans to go to a local concert the following weekend. Jake told me early on that he had an older brother, Mark, who he wasn't very close with. Apparently, Mark had always been the problem child of the family. Jake shared stories of Mark getting into fights at school, sneaking out to parties, and generally causing their parents endless stress. While Jake focused on his studies and sports, Mark seemed determined to rebel against everything. This pattern continued into adulthood. Jake went to college, got a good job in marketing, and generally had his life together. Mark, on the other hand, dropped out of community college after one semester, cycled through a series of dead-end jobs, and had a string of tumultuous relationships. Jake said they just didn't have much in common and didn't really stay in touch. I didn't think much of it at first. Lots of people aren't close with their siblings, right? But then about six months into our relationship, I finally met Mark at a family dinner. Jake's parents were celebrating their anniversary, and they insisted on having both sons there. Jake warned me beforehand that Mark could be a bit much, but I wasn't prepared for how uncomfortable the evening would be. From the moment we arrived, Mark's attention was laser-focused on me. He kept making weird comments about Jake and I's relationship, asking invasive questions about our sex life, and making jokes about stealing me away from Jake. At one point, he cornered me in the kitchen and started telling me about all of Jake's embarrassing childhood stories, clearly trying to make his brother look bad. I tried to laugh it off and stick close to Jake, but it was really unsettling. Jake seemed tense all night, constantly trying to redirect Mark's attention or change the subject when things got too awkward. His parents appeared oblivious, just happy to have both their boys home. After that night, I noticed a pattern emerging. Mark would show up randomly when Jake and I were out together. He'd coincidentally be at the same restaurant or bar. Once, we ran into him at the movies and he insisted on joining us, squeezing into the seat next to me even though the theater was mostly empty. Things escalated when Mark showed up at my workplace one day. I'm a teacher, and I was in the middle of grading papers during my lunch break when he appeared in my classroom doorway, holding a bag of takeout. He said he was in the neighborhood and thought he'd surprise me with lunch. I was so shocked I didn't know how to react. We ended up having an awkward meal where he peppered me with questions about my relationship with Jake and my past dating history. When I told Jake about it later, he seemed concerned but insisted Mark was just trying to be friendly in his own awkward way. He said Mark had always struggled to connect with people and probably just wanted to get to know me better since I was important to Jake. I wasn't so sure, but I didn't want to cause problems so I let it go. The real breaking point came about two years ago. Jake's parents were celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary with a big party at their house. All their friends and extended family were there, including Mark. He started drinking heavily early in the evening, getting louder and more obnoxious as the night went on. Jake and I were chatting with some of his cousins when Mark stumbled over, clearly wasted. He threw an arm around Jake and started ranting about how Jake always gets everything, the good looks, the successful career, the hot girlfriend. He said it wasn't fair that Jake got to be happy while Mark was alone and miserable. Jake tried to calm him down, but Mark was on a roll. He turned to me and said, you know, I saw you first at that barbecue. I was gonna talk to you but Jake swooped in. He always gets the girl. Then, to my horror, he grabbed my face and tried to kiss me, saying we should give it a shot since we had such great chemistry. I pushed him away hard, disgusted and scared. Jake immediately got between us and told Mark to back off. But Mark just laughed and said, come on, brother. Learn to share. That's when Jake snapped and punched him square in the jaw. It was chaos after that. Mark fell into a table, shattering glasses everywhere. Jake and Mark's dad had to pull them apart as they grappled on the ground. I was shaking and crying, completely overwhelmed by what had just happened. Jake's mom was sobbing, begging them to stop fighting. Eventually, Mark was thrown out of the party and Jake's dad drove him home. After that night, Jake cut contact with Mark for a long time. He was furious about what had happened and felt betrayed by his brother's actions. For a while, it seemed like that chapter of drama was closed. But in the last year, Mark has been trying to worm his way back into Jake's life. He's been calling and texting, saying he's changed and wants to make amends. He even started going to AA meetings and got a steady job, which impressed Jake's parents. They've been pushing for reconciliation, saying life's too short to hold grudges against family. Jake seems to be falling for it. He's had a few phone calls with Mark and even met up with him for coffee once. He says Mark seems different, more mature and remorseful. Jake thinks maybe Mark has finally grown up and deserves another chance. The issue now is that Jake wants to invite Mark to our wedding. I absolutely don't want him there. I don't trust Mark and I'm worried he'll cause drama or try to ruin our day somehow. The thought of him being there makes me anxious and uncomfortable. This is supposed to be the happiest day of our lives, and I don't want to spend it looking over my shoulder. 
But Jake says Mark is family and it would crush their parents if he wasn't invited. He thinks excluding Mark would cause a huge rift and cast a shadow over the whole event. Jake believes people can change and thinks we should give Mark the opportunity to prove he's different now. We've been arguing about this for weeks. Jake thinks I'm being unreasonable and says I need to let go of the past. He accuses me of not understanding because I'm an only child and don't know what it's like to have a complicated sibling relationship. But I just can't shake the feeling that having Mark there is a huge mistake. Am I the asshole for putting my foot down about this? Should I just suck it up and let Mark come for Jake's sake? I know family is complicated and I don't want to come between Jake and his brother. But I also feel like I have the right to feel safe and comfortable at my own wedding. I'm really torn and could use some outside perspectives. Update 1. Thank you all for your responses and advice on my original post. A lot has happened in the last few weeks, so I wanted to give an update. After reading all the comments, I decided to have another serious talk with Jake about the Mark situation. I chose a quiet evening when we were both relaxed and suggested we take a walk in the park near our apartment. As we strolled under the trees, I laid out all my concerns again and made it clear how uncomfortable and unsafe Mark makes me feel. I reminded Jake of specific incidents, Mark showing up at my work, his inappropriate comments, the anniversary party disaster. I pointed out how Mark's behavior goes beyond just being socially awkward, it's been consistently inappropriate and disrespectful to our relationship. I also expressed my fears about what might happen if Mark attended our wedding, especially if alcohol was involved. At first, Jake got defensive. He accused me of trying to come between him and his brother and said I was being unfair by not giving Mark a chance to show he's changed. But as we continued talking, I could see Jake starting to really hear me. When I described how anxious the thought of Mark being at our wedding made me feel, Jake's expression softened. We ended up sitting on a park bench for hours, diving deep into Jake's complicated relationship with his brother. Jake admitted that he's always felt guilty about how different their lives turned out. While Jake thrived, Mark struggled. Jake revealed that part of him has always wondered if he somehow contributed to Mark's issues by being the golden child that Mark could never measure up to. Jake also confessed that he's been in denial about how bad Mark's behavior has been because he wants so badly to have a good relationship with his brother. He said he's always hoped that if he just gave Mark enough chances, eventually things would click and they'd have the close brotherhood Jake's always wanted. As we talked, Jake seemed to realize how much he'd been minimizing Mark's actions and dismissing my valid concerns. He teared up a bit and apologized for not taking my feelings more seriously. By the end of our conversation, Jake agreed that having Mark at the wedding would be too risky. He said he'd rather have a drama-free day celebrating our love than worry about what Mark might do or say. I felt so relieved and grateful that Jake was finally seeing things from my perspective. The next day, Jake called his parents to let them know Mark wouldn't be invited to the wedding. It didn't go well. His mom cried and said we were being cruel. His dad yelled about tearing the family apart and said we'd regret this decision. They insisted we were overreacting and that Mark deserved another chance. Jake stood firm, but he was really shaken afterwards. That night, Jake was quiet and withdrawn. I could tell the conversation with his parents was weighing on him heavily. We cuddled on the couch and I reassured him that we were doing the right thing, even if it was difficult. Jake nodded, but I could see the conflict in his eyes. A few days later, I was home alone working on some wedding planning when there was a loud knock at the door. I wasn't expecting anyone, so I cautiously went to see who it was. To my shock, Mark was standing in the hallway. He'd heard from their parents that he wasn't invited to the wedding and wanted to clear things up. I was scared and didn't want to let him in, but he wouldn't stop knocking and yelling through the door. He kept saying he just wanted to talk and that he wasn't leaving until we heard him out. My hands were shaking as I called Jake at work. I tried to keep my voice calm as I explained the situation, but Jake must have sensed my fear because he said he was leaving immediately and to not open the door. Those 20 minutes waiting for Jake to get home were some of the longest of my life. Mark alternated between pleading to be let in and angrily demanding that I stop turning Jake against him. I huddled on the couch, my heart racing, praying that Jake would arrive soon. When Jake finally got there, he and Mark had a huge blow-up fight in the hallway. I could hear everything through the door. Mark accused me of manipulating Jake and ruining their family. He said Jake was betraying him by choosing some girl over his own brother. Jake fired back, saying Mark's own actions were to blame and that he needed to back off and respect our boundaries. The argument got heated, with both brothers dredging up old grievances and resentments. At one point I heard a loud thud, like someone had been shoved against the wall. I was about to call the police when I finally heard Mark storming off. But not before threatening to show up at the wedding anyway to support his brother. When Jake came inside, he looked exhausted and defeated. He had a small cut on his cheek where apparently Mark had taken a swing at him. As I cleaned up the cut, Jake broke down crying. He said he felt like he was being torn in two between his family and me. I held him and assured him that we'd get through this together. We're now looking into hiring extra security for the wedding day, just in case Mark tries to make good on his threat to show up uninvited. We're also considering changing the venue, but with only six weeks to go, our options are limited. This whole situation has been so stressful. Jake is upset about the rift with his family, but he's been supportive and says he knows we're doing the right thing. We're trying to focus on the positive parts of wedding planning, but it's hard with this dark cloud hanging over everything. I'm worried about what Mark might do next, but I'm glad Jake and I are on the same page now. We're united in our decision, even if it's causing pain in the short term. I'll post another update if anything else major happens before the wedding. 
Thanks again for all the support and advice. Update 2. It's been about a month since my last update, and unfortunately things have gotten even more complicated with the Mark situation. About two weeks ago, Jake and I were having a quiet night in, finalizing some wedding details, when there was a knock at the door. We were both immediately on edge, worried it might be Mark again. But when Jake checked the peephole, he saw it was his parents. They hadn't told us they were coming to town, so their sudden appearance was a surprise. Jake hesitantly opened the door. His mom immediately burst into tears and hugged him, while his dad stood back looking stern. They said they wanted to talk things out and find a compromise about Mark attending the wedding. Jake was hesitant but agreed to hear them out. For the next hour, Jake's parents presented a united front in trying to convince us to change our minds. His mom brought up childhood memories, times when Mark had been a good big brother to Jake, family vacations where everyone got along. His dad talked about how much Mark had supposedly changed, mentioning his steady job and AA meetings. They even tried to guilt trip Jake by bringing up his grandfather. Apparently, Grandpa Joe's health had taken a turn for the worse recently, though Jake later found out this was greatly exaggerated. They said this could be his last big family event and how devastated he'd be if the whole family wasn't there. I mostly stayed quiet and let Jake handle it, but I could see him wavering. When his mom started crying about how she just wanted all her children together on this special day, Jake looked at me pleadingly. I felt awful, but I shook my head slightly. I just couldn't agree to having Mark there, not after everything that had happened. Jake's parents left angry and disappointed. That night, Jake and I had our biggest fight yet about the situation. He accused me of being selfish and said I was asking him to choose between me and his family. I reminded him of all the reasons we decided not to invite Mark in the first place. We went to bed upset and barely spoke for the next few days. The tension between us was palpable. I buried myself in work and wedding planning, while Jake spent more time than usual at the gym or out with friends. We were civil to each other, but the easy warmth that usually characterized our relationship was missing. Then last week, I was at work when I got a voicemail from an unknown number. It was Mark, saying he wanted to apologize and make things right. He asked if we could meet up to talk things over. His voice sounded clear and steady, not slurred or angry like the last time we'd interacted. I was conflicted about how to handle this. Part of me wanted to ignore the message entirely, but I knew that wouldn't solve anything. I decided to tell Jake about it that evening. To my surprise, he thought we should give Mark a chance to apologize in person. He said maybe this was the opportunity to clear the air once and for all. I was really hesitant, but I could see how much it meant to Jake to try. So I agreed to meet Mark at a public coffee shop, with Jake present. We chose a time on Saturday afternoon, figuring the place would be busy enough that Mark wouldn't try anything dramatic. The meeting was. Strange. Mark showed up right on time, dressed neatly in slacks and a button-down shirt, a far cry from his usual slovenly appearance. He was overly polite, calling me ma'am and Jake bro in a way that felt forced. He launched into a clearly rehearsed apology, talking about how much he'd changed and how sorry he was for his past behavior. He promised he'd be on his best behavior at the wedding and wouldn't cause any problems. But something felt off. Mark barely made eye contact with me, instead keeping his gaze fixed somewhere over my left shoulder. He kept looking at Jake for approval after everything he said, as if gauging his brother's reaction. His words sounded sincere, but his body language was tense and uncomfortable. At one point, Mark reached across the table to touch my hand while apologizing for scaring me that day at our apartment. I instinctively pulled back, and I saw a flash of anger in his eyes before he quickly covered it up with a sad smile. It made me realize that despite his words, Mark hasn't really changed at all. After we left the coffee shop, I told Jake I still wasn't comfortable having Mark at the wedding. Jake was visibly frustrated but said he understood. He called Mark later that evening to tell him our decision stood. Apparently Mark exploded, dropping the polite act entirely. Jake said he spewed awful things about me, accusing me of brainwashing Jake and turning him against his family. He said Jake was weak for letting a woman control him. Jake hung up on him mid-rant. Now Jake's whole family is furious with us. His parents are threatening not to come to the wedding. They've been calling and texting nonstop, alternating between angry tirades and emotional pleas. Jake's sister, who had previously stayed out of the drama, even reached out to say she was disappointed in Jake's choice. Jake is torn and depressed. I can see the toll this is taking on him. He's not sleeping well and seems distracted at work. Last night, I found him looking at old family photos, tears in his eyes. It breaks my heart to see him struggling like this. I feel terrible for causing this rift in Jake's family. I never wanted to come between him and his loved ones. But I also feel like I'm protecting myself and our relationship from Mark's toxic influence. I keep replaying all the uncomfortable and scary interactions with Mark in my head, reminding myself why we made this decision. We're considering postponing the wedding to give everyone time to cool off, but we've already put down so many non-refundable deposits. Plus, I worry that delaying will just prolong the drama and give Mark and Jake's parents more time to pressure us. I don't know what the right thing to do is anymore. This was supposed to be such a happy time in our lives, and instead it's turned into a nightmare. Jake and I are solid in our relationship, but this situation is putting a huge strain on us. I'm scared about what this means for our future with Jake's family. I could really use some advice on how to move forward from here. Should we stand our ground or try to compromise somehow? How can I support Jake through this without sacrificing my own boundaries? Any thoughts would be appreciated. Update 3. 
I'm writing this final update from our honeymoon in Hawaii. Yes, we went through with the wedding last weekend. It was beautiful and meaningful and everything we hoped it would be, but it didn't come without drama. In the weeks leading up to the wedding, Jake's family continued to pressure us about inviting Mark. Jake's mom called daily, fluctuating between guilt trips and anger. His dad left long, rambling voicemails about family loyalty. Jake's sister sent passive-aggressive texts implying we were being selfish. Jake was a wreck, torn between his love for me and his desire to please his family. There were moments I thought he might cave under the pressure. But we supported each other and stayed united in our decision. Three days before the wedding, we got an email from Mark. The tone was drastically different from his previous communications. He said he respected our decision and wouldn't come to the ceremony, but asked if he could at least attend the reception to celebrate with family. He promised to be on his best behavior and said he'd leave immediately if we asked. Jake and I spent hours discussing it. We were both wary, but also saw it as a potential olive branch. After much deliberation, we agreed to this compromise, with strict conditions. Mark would not be allowed at the ceremony or cocktail hour, could only attend the reception after dinner, and would have to leave if he caused any problems. The ceremony itself was perfect. Jake's parents did attend, though they were noticeably cold towards me. But seeing Jake's face as I walked down the aisle made all the stress worth it. For those moments, it was just us, pledging our love and commitment to each other. At the reception, Mark showed up about an hour in, as agreed. He congratulated us stiffly and then mostly kept to himself at a table with some cousins. I was relieved and started to think maybe things would be okay. But then came the speeches. Jake's best man told some funny stories about their childhood, including a few mentions of Mark. I saw Mark at his table, getting progressively more agitated as he drank. I whispered to Jake that we should keep an eye on him. When it was time to cut the cake, Mark suddenly stood up and loudly asked for everyone's attention. Jake tried to stop him, but Mark launched into a rambling, drunken speech. He talked about how Jake was making a huge mistake and how I'd torn their family apart. He said Jake would regret choosing me over blood and that one day he'd realize what he'd lost. Security quickly removed Mark as he shouted that he was just telling the truth. Jake's mom was crying, his dad looked furious, and I was utterly mortified. The room was dead silent, everyone staring at us. But then something amazing happened, Jake took the microphone. In front of everyone, he reaffirmed his love for me and his commitment to our marriage. He said that while he loved his family, I was his future and his priority now. He apologized to our guests for the scene and asked everyone to enjoy the rest of the night. The rest of the reception was a bit awkward, but Jake's words meant everything to me. We left for our honeymoon the next morning, both emotionally drained but happy to finally be married. We've been in Hawaii for a few days now, trying to relax and process everything that happened. Jake's parents haven't contacted us since the wedding, and we're not sure what will happen with those relationships long term. But Jake and I are more solid than ever. This experience has shown us how strong we are together. I don't know what the future holds with Jake's family or with Mark. For now, we're focusing on enjoying our honeymoon and starting our married life together. We'll deal with the fallout when we get home. Thank you to everyone who offered advice and support throughout this journey. Your words helped give me the strength to stand up for myself and my relationship. I'm hopeful that time will heal the rifts in Jake's family, but for now, I'm just grateful to be starting this new chapter with my husband.